Welcome to our class. I am looking at my folder 05-CH4 in my brackets HTML editor. So this is my folder and in the folder I have another folder which is called web. That is my working folder here. There is my index.html I also have two images. I also have an images folder. You are not required to have a folder or directory structure. I am pointing it out here because it is very commonly used and I have index open. So up here I have my open file and here is my HTML document. So let's take a look in the browser. Here we learned about centering a container and centering text. This week we will look at some very important concepts, margin and padding. Every block level element has by default margin on the top of it. Notice when I see my background color, I notice there is a space between them. That is a margin. There are margins to the top and there are margins to the left and right. However, when an element is 100% width, there will be no left or right margin. Here, my outer wrapper is at 960 pixels and my left and right margin are set to auto, meaning it will automatically fill up proportionally. The only way you can actually see where your margins and padding, padding is inside. Notice how squashed this is. Margin is on the outside, padding is on the inside. The only time you can really see it is if you have a background color, an outline, or a border, which we will learn today. Many times it doesn't matter if everything is white. Sometimes it does matter. The amount of margin is either going to be one or two lines, depending on the type of block level element it is. So supposing I wanted to move this down away from the top of my page, how would I do that? What is the this I'm referring to? This is my outer container, ID equals wrapper. Now notice we already have the left and and write margins. I can set margin hyphen top. I'll set this to 100 pixels. Notice it has moved down. You can set the individual margin properties separately or you can use a shorthand. There are several types of shorthands. The most common is for all four sides and it goes in at clockwise order. The top, which is 100 pixels, the right, which is auto, the bottom, we'll just go 50 pixels, and the which is auto. This is the CSS margin property. This is the shorthand, or you can set the individual properties. Now let's take a look at padding, and we will look at this element. This is our div with a class equal silver. So we already have a selector here. We can use that same selector to apply some padding. Here is my class, and if I use the padding shortcut, and I'll set it to 20 pixels, that will put padding on all four sides. So if you use this shortcut with one value, it will be set to all four sides. If you use a shortcut for four values, it will be set to the four individual sides in clockwise order top, right, bottom, left. Note that these values are not comma separated. They are space separated. So if I look at my web page, now you can see I have some roominess here. Let's take a look at the border property. Supposing I want to put a border around my outer wrapper. The border property there is an individual border color property, border width property, and border style property. 
You can set them all individually. You can set them individually for all four sides. You can set them different for all four sides. If you want to make all four sides the same, which is what you might generally do, you can use the border shorthand. It takes the pixel value. I'm going to use five pixels. It takes the color. I, I will use red so we can see it. And it takes the style. There are nine different styles and they are in the text. I'll just use solid. So you have to specify all three to be correct. And now we see the border. One thing I would like to point out that borders and padding add width. So if this was 960 width and we added a five pixel border, the pixel is not the width of the container. It is the thickness of the border. So here we have five pixels on the right, five pixels on the left. Technically speaking, my container is now 970 pixels. So you need to take this into consideration. Border and padding add to the width of a container. Margins do not because they are on the outside of the container. These are properties are not inherited and they mainly apply to block level elements. You cannot set a width to an inline element. However, you can put margin and padding on it. I always recommend, here is a nav element. So let's, let's use that as our selector. The outline property is identical to the border, except that it does not add width. So it's good for testing. So you can see here is our nav. Here again, it is a block level element and it extends 100%. By seeing where your content actually is, you can better lay out your page in the future. So this is the outline property. Now supposing we wanted to move that away from the left hand, we could either put a margin or we could put padding. So let's put some padding inside there because padding would be on the inside of the container. And I'll just put it all across to make it symmetrical in the event that we were to center at some point. And now you see it has moved away. So these are very nice properties here. Let's take a look at images. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the, the logo underneath my text here. Images are inline elements, very similar to the A element, which we have here. They're all inline. So here's my H1 element, which is a block level. And now if I use my image, you need the source attribute. Now, one nice thing about brackets and other editors is that it knows where your images are. So here I have the logo in my root. Notice it's in my root. Therefore, I do not need a path for it. You also need the alt attribute. This is for accessibility because screen readers do not know what logo.gif means, but they can interpret, oh, it's the logo. GIF, JPEG, and PNG are the file formats that are allowed in the document. Now, notice there it is. There's my logo, exactly where I put it. It's underneath Java Jam Coffee House because this is block level. Therefore, there's a space. The H1 element is centered. Supposing we want that logo to be centered also. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the text align property in the header so that it will center both. So I'm going to remove text align. I will add an element selector for the header. Now they are both centered. Let's add another image. I'm into my div, class equals silver, and I'm going to add another image. This time, I'm going to go into my images folder. Notice my editor knows my, where my files are. I have two images here. I'm going to choose the road. I need an alt. Now, we have inserted what's called the path. And because the index is on the root, we are saying go down into the images folder and retrieve this file. 
Notice these are one level down. Here's my root. My root is web. These are in my root. The folder is in my root. The files are in my folder. If I were to save this, there it is. Notice it is an inline element. Therefore, what's next to it runs across. So we can put a BR element to move that text underneath it. We can also use a very nice HTML5 element called a figure element. The figure element is used for enclosing content that needs to act like a figure in a document. The figure element is block level. So how do I know that it's block level? I'm going to show you how by putting an outline. That's how I can test to see where my content actually is. Notice, there we are. Now, why do we have space on the right and the left? Because we have padding. We have padding inside here. Now, the figure element is a little bit more indented on the right and left than a normal HTML element. That's just the way it displays. Now, supposing I wanted to put a caption underneath there. We have the fig caption. There it is. That also is block level, and we can just know, we know it's block level because it did not sit beside the image. It goes down to the next line. Should I wish to center both of these? And I'm just doing this in line because it's easy right now. So text line centers what's inside. This is how you center an image. You cannot apply the text align property to the image. The image has to be in a block level container and you apply the text align to the container, not to the image. So this will center everything inside. Let's look at background images. And I'm going to apply a background image to my body. I will get rid of my background color. So this is the background image property. And the syntax is a little different. This is the, the source code, the source, the file name. And I have bg.gif in my root. And here we see a background image. By default, a background image will tile, repeat, over and over unless we specify. You can make some very nice layouts and effects using background images and the various background properties. If we only wanted to display this once, we can use the background repeat property. Notice these are all background related properties starting out with. These are the different values. We would set it to no repeat. Notice, there it is at the very top. A background image is usually just a small little image. We can have it repeat however we want it and wherever we want it. You can put it in the background, you can put it inside a container. So if we wanted to repeat X, it repeats it across the X axis. Repeat Y would repeat it down on the left hand position. Let's go back to no repeat and let's look at the background position property. The background position takes two values. The first value is the horizontal going across. The second value is vertical going down. It can be a word, it can be a pixel, or it can be a percent. So if I wanted to do the background position and on the horizontal I wanted to do it centered, but on the vertical, I wanted to do, say, 50 pixels. There it is. It's centered. It's centered, and it's 50 pixels on the vertical. This is a confusing property, so you have to think it through. So on the horizontal going across, it's centered. We have left, center, right. On the vertical going down, we have top, center, and bottom. So we're at vertical down 50 pixels. Here again, many CSS properties take multiple parameters. 
They are not comma separated. They are space separated. The only properties that will be comma separated are for your fonts. So here we have 100 pixels over and 50 down at its starting point. So let's go back to where we were. Let's look at the box shadow property. And we'll apply this to our outer wrapper. This is very similar to text shadow, where it takes a horizontal offset, a vertical offset, a blur radius, and a color. Notice they are not comma separated, they are space separated. And now we see this nice little drop shadow. By setting the values to zero, and you can't just eliminate them, you can create an outer glow. So here we have this outer glow all the way across.